Good morning. It is Friday, May 15th for Brian's Media Briefing. Uh, Bob Ravenscroft, the Vice President for Advancement, and we have John Woodrich, the Chief Executive Officer of Brian Medical Center here. Um, give you an update on some testing, some drive-through um, and mobile clinic updates, and some you know internal things that John always does, answer specific questions. Uh, before we get started with the daily stats, though, I want to address multiple inquiries we've had about convalescent plasma. I think it was triggered by Mayo uh, releasing its interim analysis yesterday, which is understandable why these questions would be coming in. Um, a lot really hasn't changed since Dr. Ina Silenix, um presented a couple of weeks ago, and she shared that we are fortunate to be participating with uh, other healthcare organizations with a premier worldwide health organization like the Mayo Clinic, uh, who is the principal investigator on this. Uh, with that said, because it's still a study, um, we are precluded from giving a lot of site-specific information. That is the nature of things when they are in studies and, and dictated by the principal investigator. But we also understand it's kind of the wild, wild west out there for studies, trials, and, you know, there's an element of information overload. Before I get into it, I just want to assure you that Brian will continue to adhere to sound investigatory and trial pro protocols with esteemed experts, vetted processes, and we will share with you what we can when we can. So what we can share about the uh, interim analysis released by, by Mayo yesterday is there were 10,422 individuals across the United States that have been infused with convalescent plasma. Specific to the questions we have received, um, Again, multiple people asking about how much of this is the hospital using it, um, how successful it's uh, being, how many patients have received it, um, how do you determine who's getting it, and is there a time limit on when it needs to be administered to be effective. So uh, this is what we can share uh, as a, we're related to that study. To date, Brian has infused 34 patients um, with COVID-19, with convalescent plasma and antibodies here at Bryan Medical Center. Again, 34 patients. Um, the response on how it works, we've had a good number of positive responses from patients and, and a couple where uh, the disease has worsened for um, a couple of patients despite the treatment. But so at this time, there's really no definitive way for us to know if it's helping or if it's just the natural progression in the disease for, for those where it deteriorated. But what um, our lab was able to share with us and our clinical team, it's very fair to say that there have been no adverse um, effects because of the plasma treatment. And our team does remain very cautiously optimistic about this. So I think I just kind of close by saying we're very fortunate to be a part of this study. Hope is not a strategy, but we are hopeful with the results of this. Um, oh, a couple more things that were asked. Um, to receive convalescent plasma, you have to be 19 years or older. And how sick do you have to be? The protocol says if you present with severe or life-threatening symptoms, it can be administered. And there are no requirements on at what stage of the disease it can be administered, but the sense from the team is the earlier it's better, the better, but that is inconclusive at that point. So again, I know many of you have been asking it. Um, the Mayo study that they released is going to be a wonderful source of information. Go back to the interview that Ina, uh, Dr. Silenex gave. Uh, when was that, Brad? Last uh, two weeks ago. Two weeks ago. Um, it's still the same basis, and we have treated 34 patients with it here at Bryan so far. So I think that covers all of those specific questions. So I'll provide the stats, John will give an update, and then we'll be available for any other questions. Um, tested to date, or a test administered by Bryan so far, are now at 6,898. We have 808 positive results, and we have 1,065 pending. Our midnight census here at Bryan um, last night was 378. So, John, all yours. Thanks, Bob. The uh, key topic is really in our pending. Uh, we've been working with our outside lab, and we did receive a couple hundred of the uh, results back yesterday, but. Yesterday, we also did 366 more tests. 
Um, we believe that, and this is what typically happens over the weekend, we'll see a little bit of a, a catch up because less tests are done on the weekend uh, because there's fewer people that are calling their physician's offices to get orders to come in for testing. Um, we have 22 positive uh, COVID patients in house, 11 from Lancaster County and 11 from outside of Lancaster County. We have four individuals that are pending results that are inpatients. Uh, we have nine individuals on ventilators, four are from Lancaster County, five are from outside of the county. Uh, 11 of those individuals are in our intensive care unit, two are in our progressive care unit, and nine are in our general care unit. And as we stated uh, earlier today, it'll be one of the days where our mobile will be at the Lincoln High School. Uh, those individuals have already been scheduled uh, through the health department. We have about 150 individuals that we will be testing uh, later on today.